Hey everyone, Chris Bennett here, your blockchain beard guy. Look, it's been a little while, but I uh, wanted to come to you guys and just talk to you a little bit about blockchain and Web3, the state of the market, and uh, really the key point, kind of learning to see through some of these technology hype cycles. So let's start off with what's going on. You know, it's May 2023. Obviously, if you've been following the blockchain, uh, Web3 crypto space for any length of time, you know that blockchain is down right now. Um, you know, last year uh, kind of ended on a bad note with the big FTX meltdown. Of course, before that, crypto prices crashed pretty hard. Um, and if you were excited about blockchain or Web3 a while ago, maybe you're wondering, hey, did I make a mistake? Or if you were looking at getting a job or maybe you've already gotten a job in Web3, maybe you're wondering, hey, did I, did I make the wrong move? Um, well, I think it's important to kind of step back and you know, look at these different hype cycles. Remember a couple of years ago, 2021, uh, that was the year of the NFTs. Those were the most popular thing in the world. Of course, then last year, uh, we all thought it was going to be VR and the metaverse that was going to take over the world. Facebook rebranded themselves to Meta. Uh, maybe didn't work out as well as they had hoped. Of course, uh, this year, you can't go anywhere without hearing about AI, specifically generative AI like chat GPT. Um, and I think it's important to remember through all of this that uh, blockchain is not crypto. And I think what happened at the end of last year and the fact that crypto's down so much is really helping differentiate uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies in a lot of people's minds. Uh, Axios actually just published a very interesting article about how blockchain is decoupling itself from crypto uh, and kind of the eye of the public or average consumer. I'll post a link in the description if you're interested. But if you guys have ever been through any of my courses or listened to any of my content, you know what a big believer I am in uh, learning the lessons from history. And I think um, we can go back and look a little history to see what the future of blockchain might look like. So um, just some examples from my life. I remember in the 1980s, artificial intelligence was very, very hot. There were a lot of big developments, uh, things like neural networks, connectionism, the development and advancement of fuzzy systems and evolutionary logic and computation. You know, all of these things had us believing that AI was right around the corner. And then that kind of went to sleep for 30 or 40 years. Um, if we talk about the metaverse and virtual worlds and virtual reality in the late 80s and early 90s, VR was the hot new thing. You know, in 1989, Nintendo released the Power Glove accessory. So um, you could control video game characters using hand gestures and motions way ahead of its time. Of course, if you want to see uh, what we thought AI, I'm sorry, what VR, excuse me, was going to look like 30 years ago, uh, you might want to look a clip up from 1992 movie The Lawnmower Man. Uh, just kind of see how far the technology has progressed over the last few decades. It uh, was definitely some impressive special effects that didn't age well, impressive at the time anyway. Um, and in 1992, Computer Gaming World magazine actually went as far as to predict that there would be affordable virtual reality for everyone by the year 1994. Then that took a nap for a few decades. Heck, we can even see this with the internet. The internet, technically speaking, went live in October 1969. Um, but it wasn't really until 30 years later uh, that mainstream adoption really started. And remember that even blockchain itself isn't new. If we want to start talking about the history of blockchain, well, that's a story that starts in the mid-1970s, almost 50 years ago. Um, there were a number of interesting projects along the way, like the BitGold project in 1998. But I think there's a lot that we can learn from all this. Some of the things we can extract from these historical lessons is that every quote-unquote new technology is actually just a technology that's come around a few times before. Um, it usually takes technology a few cycles to get it right, so to speak. Um, and getting it right usually occurs after a long and protracted winter. Um, seems like every time one of these technologies comes back in a new hype cycle, you know, there's always a bunch of hype and predictions about what it's going to do. And almost exclusively, we see that technology fails to live up to that hype and that expectation in the short run. But it vastly exceeds those expectations in the long run. And again, I would point you to the history of the Internet if you want to see that. 
Um, you know, finally, I'll close just by talking about a point that Andy Martin over at IBM makes, and I think he's spot on. When we talk about blockchain and Web3, we're really talking about building the rails uh, for the economy of the next century, if you kind of think about the railroad era of the 19th century. Um, you know, these types of build outs usually take a lot longer than expected, but the rewards are great. So if you're feeling a little down this blockchain Web3 crypto winner, uh, don't worry. It's only temporary. And I think really right now we're laying the groundwork for what the future of Web3 looks like. So um, stay involved in Web3. We need all the help we can get. Until next time, hope you guys are doing good. Be good to each other. I'm Chris Bennett, your blockchain beard guy.